to me as believers, uh, we are born and shaped in mm -hmm. iniquity, in yes. things that have happened in our life. But I don't want us to get stuck in a place where we don't know how to rise above. And to me, uh, sabotaging, because to me, uh, self-infliction is kind of like a self-sabotage, mm -hmm. where you actually undercut your ability to heal or grow. Like some people... I'm Sandy Powell. Welcome to the round table. Um, I guess everyone has what we call scars. Things that we have injured ourselves or caused pain. Uh, sometimes we don't know how to deal with it when with the scars that you caused. Uh, and Reverend Prathan Powell, my husband, is going to co-host with me today again okay. on this topic. You know, I'm happy to have you sit here looking at me, talking. Glad to be here always. Good. Um, you and I both know this topic too well, firsthand. Um, scars and the scars and pains that we cause ourselves. Yes. And sometimes it's difficult for people to know how to handle and deal with it, even when it comes down to either forgiving themselves or how to get past the pain and the scars that... Uh, has been caused in their lives at their own hand. Um, what do you think? Well, first of all, one has to be willing to own their role or their part in the injury, right. if we per se, per se, because it's easy to do the Adam Eve blame game, mm -hmm. but it's better always to say, I must acknowledge this, and acknowledge something, saying, okay, I'm going to take my part of my ownership. Now, I may not own all of it, if it's just 1%, that's still a percentage right. that you own. Right. And that is the beginning process of starting the healing process. I know that sometimes in when we cause our own pain and cause our own scars, like you said, we like to try to find another source of our pain or another source of our hurt. Um, and so that's where I guess the blame game comes in. We don't want to really look at the fact that I, I've done this to myself. Um, and so we, we injure again in that area as well because now we start to uh, look at other people or other situations and try to attach the blame to them or that person's uh, for what we have caused and now again causing more harm and more injury to the situation as opposed to just owning, like mm -hmm. you said. Yes the part that they have played in their injury. And, uh, and, and when I say injury, I'm talking across the board. You know, we injure ourselves in many, many, many ways, you know, and we cause our own scars sometimes, self-inflicted wounds. Like, uh, for one, I know when we indulge in things that God has told us not to yeah. indulge in, um, and there is a consequence to it, we now cannot blame anyone. And I'm not saying that any one is better than the other. Uh, Self-inflicted wounds are just that across the board. Okay. But let's say, for instance, if someone was to uh, go and have unprotected sex and, and they contract something, okay. um, that's a self-inflicted wound. That's something that was caused their own injury, their own pain. And sometimes we want to blame the person who gave it to us when in actuality, the first initial person I have to look at yes, is myself. myself. Yes. That if I had not been involved in this person or with this person, I, I could very well have not been uh, inflicted with this with this disease or whatever it is that that happens. So, what do you what do you think that is the best avenue in dealing with initially owning our work? Because you said own it, owning our work. Because that's the first thing we do is we deflect owning it well it's, I don't want to sound carnal but it's going to be a carnal statement you know that's the song that Michael Jackson was saying about the man in the mirror yeah. and that's a reflection and so often as Christians because I'm a believer right. 
we like to deflect. But every now and then, most I'm not even we need to do this more is reflect. What part did I play in that? You know, it was like coming out of a bad relationship and you go into another bad relationship. Evidently, it's something you, you're not addressing relating to you. Mm-hmm. It's why you keep getting these same re-injuries again. Right. You know, it's like when God sets you free, you're free indeed, but it's like when God lived from a situation of an addiction. Well, if you go around people that are still doing that type of lifestyle, well, you you start to fall back into it. So now you have afflicted yourself again with the same injury that now it takes even more to get you out of it. And I think that that's a good example of self-infliction is or self uh, or scarring of oneself mm-hmm. is when we indulge in drug use and drug addiction to include abusing alcohol. Yes. Um, that when we do these things, we have to know that there is a consequence to it and that it will bring about scars and it will bring about injury. Um, so when we find ourselves indulging in drug use and drug addictions uh, or substance abuse, let's just say that, that is what I call self-inflicting uh, on ourselves. But we can't blame other people for our addiction. And, and especially, you know, uh, I'm not, now, now let me just clear the air because I hear it. I hear some people saying some people were turned on when they were young mm-hmm. and they were influenced. Okay, I'm not speaking to those injuries. No. I'm talking about someone going in, eyes wide open. They know better, but they still enter into a gate. They still cross a line, causing injury and afflictions and uh, scars to themselves. We, we have had people who have been delivered from addictions, mm-hmm. but be, they, they find themselves... I guess surrounding themselves with the wrong people or the people who are still uh, torn with their addiction mm-hmm. and then they find themselves drawn back into but, but, that addiction. But let's use a scripture that says evil associate corrupt good manners. Mm-hmm. So that would be revisiting the scars, the scars that are in the process of healing. Uh, whenever I have injured myself, uh, you know I put a band-aid. Mm-hmm. Band-aid is to aid the injury in the healing, yeah. in the healing process. Mm-hmm. But if I keep peeling it back, looking at it, and then start peeling back that little, what we call a little scab, uh, scab it, it goes back to that whitish look, and then it start bleeding again. Right. Now, who caused that? I did. It's like with the heart. Out of the heart comes for the issues of life. Everybody in life experiences mm-hmm. an injury, a scar. Some caused by others, but some would cause ourselves. Mm-hmm. We easily say, you did that to me. It's why right. I'm doing what I'm doing. Right. you the reason why. Well, we have to stop doing that. And see, you know what? I got to look at Prathen. I got to look at uh, the, the man in the mirror who sees what, who he really is. Right. And I think that that, like you said, is the beginning of the healing of scars, regardless of what the scar is, but especially those ones that are caused by, like, at my own hands. Mm-hmm. What I've got to do is stop blaming other people for my movement. Okay. Stop blaming other people for my uh, decisions, choices. for my acts, for my choices, and allow myself to be healed because every time we allow ourselves to deflect or put the blame someplace else, we once again will cause an uh, injury to ourselves because we're not, like if I was to cut my leg and I say, it's not me cutting my leg, even though the knife is in my hand. Mm-hmm. I blame someone else for the reason why I'm cutting myself. Every time I <coughs> injure myself, I don't think it's me. And I won't stop. Okay. But if we just own the fact that it's at your will and it's your decision to not injure yourself, and that even includes going into what I call toxic relationships, okay. toxic, uh, you know, Ministries. <laughs> I hate to say it, but ministries can be toxic. And we not say they can be toxic because if yeah. you know that you're in a place where it's just no reference of God in that place, the leadership is corrupt, and all you care about is being positioned, then you really causing that scar to be even worse. Right. Because even God Himself says the hand rides on the wall. Right. We don't want God to forsake the assembly, but if God forsake the place, then why are you there? Right. That's religion why. Right. People always say we got church hurt. So if your church hurt is that because of a scar that you that you encountered. But most of the church pain. hurt 
is self-inflicted wounds. Definitely, definitely. Most of the church hurt that I have heard, very few is at the hand of the church. The majority of self-inflict, the majority of church hurts that I have known have always been volunteer participation yes. in darkness. And then in the middle of their participation comes the pain and the hurt, which is really self-inflicted because, yeah. first of all, according to the word, we know what we should and should not do. Mm -hmm. So when we get injured, I have to know that it's at my hand that I'm injured. Like yes. if I throw a boulder up in the air and stand up under it, I've got to know the boulder's coming down on top of my head, right? Yes, that's true. To me, that's what I mean by self-inflicted wounds and scars that people need to learn how to heal from. Mm -hmm. In other words, stop, like you said, yeah. revisiting mm -hmm. those old wounds and opening them back up. Like some people want to talk about the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Constantly revisiting mm -hmm. the, the hurt and not moving on to what would cause you to be healed, uh, to actually uh, grow from it. And that part, to me, is where people go into blaming other people. You're never going to grow that way. And so as long as you can blame someone else, there's no growth, and okay. you will repeat that action. But well, I call them pain seekers. You know, <laughs> you, 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 you're looking for avenues and places to remind you of that, that dark place. You know, anytime you have a scar, it, it's a bad reminder. Mm -hmm. It's like it you is. look at it, you see it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it becomes a, a, a mental illness for a person. I, I don't want to say that lightly. It has to be something mentally going on for them to revisit mm -hmm. the scars that they could be delivered from. Mm -hmm. But they have to want to be delivered. Not blaming you or I, right. but owning it. In other words, if the door says exit and the building's on fire, why are you standing in the building? Get out. Right. Okay, sometimes when accidents happen, people come back and visit and they remember that. Uh, say a loved one passed, they go back and they revisit the graveyard over and over again. It's kind of like revisiting that scar that you're trying to be healed mm -hmm, of. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that uh, to me as believers, uh, we are born and shaped in mm -hmm. iniquity, in yes. things that have happened in our life. But I don't want us to get stuck in a place where we don't know how to rise above. And to me, uh, sabotaging, because to me, uh, self-infliction is kind of like a self-sabotage, mm -hmm. where you actually undercut your ability to heal or grow. Like some people actually get off into being sick okay. for the attention, uh, attention or, or get off into being um, afflicted mm -hmm. because it brings some type of gratification of attention. Uh, and to me, that is kind of like the stuff that we have to kind of grow so that we can get healthy in our mind and, in, and, not, and also in our body. Yes. Because we cause sickness on ourselves. You know, I, I know people who actually speak sickness out of their mouth yeah. onto themselves. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I believe that this is a, a time where we have to understand that we need to grow past this moment. We need to learn how to heal mm -hmm. from self-afflictions, self uh, wounds that we have caused on our own selves. Mm -hmm. uh, I know one thing that you and I uh, do and we do quite often is honesty. Yes. Um, and painful honesty sometimes. Sometimes it's not comfortable and you and I have even our own personal life have had to revisit mm -hmm. uh, self-inflicted wounds or self-inflicted yeah. injuries uh, that we cause on ourselves uh, uh, you to you and me to me, mm -hmm. and not look to blame someone else for uh, the state in which we were in, because at that place, blaming someone didn't allow us to heal and grow yes. and be able to get up and move forward, because we always had an alibi or a reason to hold on to. Uh, it's kind of like holding on to the end of a, end of a knife, okay. not letting it go. You're going to continually to injure yourself yeah. as long as you hold on to this. This thing hurt me. This is the thing that hurt me, but mm -hmm. you won't let it go. And you won't stay away from and it. And you won't stay away from it. So you're constantly grabbing the knives, the swords, the end of a weapon, and, and you know it's going to cause you injury, but you won't let it go. 
And to me, I think that that's something that believers, you know, we have kind of taken a, a, a turn there. We, we, we look for, I call it the Adam and Eve syndrome. We look for someone to blame for our, our hurts and our pains. Mm -hmm. But I, I heard the Spirit of the Lord uh, talking to me about this, about healing mm -hmm. from self-inflicted wounds. Okay. Because um, when you don't learn better, you, you don't do, do better. better. Yeah. And so as long as we have the avenue or the option of placing the blame someplace else, we, we won't actually pick up and do the work that we need to do mm -hmm. to get whole and to get healed um, in and of ourselves. We'll find ourselves constantly dipping in another uh, barrel when mm -hmm. this is the barrel I need to be dipping in to heal myself. Does that make sense? That makes sense. I was thinking about when Jesus uh, was uh, doing what he normally he always done, perform miracle. But he asked this particular question to this individual. Uh, he said, will you be made whole? Mm. And, and all the guy can say, well, you know, I, I can't do it because that's such. he gave a reason. Mm. So a lot of time with these scars, we, we like them for some reason. Because if you keep talking about the same injury, you're not trying to make progress. Or it gives you gratification. Yeah. Now, gratification goes in a different form. I mean, right. It can be the point that it's going to bring people to you. People can always, you know, control, I mean, console you. At some point, you just need to grow up. At some point, you need to just stop it and move on because it can be to a place where the little boy that cried wolf. At some point, people are going to stop visiting you. Right. And you made that statement, making excuses, when God says, you know, Christ quickly asked him, mm -hmm. will thou be made whole, as mm -hmm. opposed to answering a, a, a stern, because mm -hmm. the reason why you come in there, you want to get in the pool. Yeah, yeah. So if that's the reason, then why are you making excuses about being made whole? Yeah. Why not just answer the question, yes, mm -hmm. I want to be made whole. But I'm sure there was some gratification in being lame. Yeah. There was some gratification in not having to do it for yourself and someone else having pity. Because pity is good. At, you know, even all of us experience having someone have pity on you yeah. when you're in that state of, feeling really bad mm -hmm. and someone take pity on you. Yeah. It makes you feel good for a moment to think that someone else cares. Mm -hmm. But pity is not a place that believers are supposed to stay because it's a temporary holding spot. And you'll get stuck. And, and not only will you get stuck, but you'll get left. People don't last long in pity. That's good. People don't, they don't tarry long in pity. People won't, um, what's the word, suffer long suffer with you Dude, yeah. in pity. There's a difference between pity and being merciful and being uh, uh, showing kindness. The, pity is a, is a short-lived place. It's not supposed to be mm -hmm. long term. It's kind of like study has proven. It said you went to the hospital mm -hmm. and you was out beyond 32 weeks. Your visitation is going to slow down. Or no. Yeah. And I don't yeah. care how much people love you. Yeah. They will, I mean, in the beginning, like, God forbid, if something was to happen mm -hmm. where you had to be in the hospital, the first uh, couple of weeks, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't keep them out of the room, probably. Yeah, yeah. The next couple of weeks, they'll be scheduling it mm -hmm. when I'm going to come by. Yeah. Two more weeks after that, it'll probably narrow down to your out closest. Out of sight, out of mind, yeah. Your yeah, closest yeah. people. And then after that, it'll be the faithful. It'll be just, you know, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she'll be there. Yeah. I, when I was a chaplain, I recall I had a patient. Um, she was, what you just talked about, had, she had some major scars mm -hmm. from a marriage that she had got delivered from. But for some odd reason, she still kept feeling like the guy owed or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, he had moved on. He had talked about her beyond measure. Right. And he actually had um, taken another wife. Oh, wow. And um, which he was in her life. Now, unfortunately, she died without the rehealing process with him. Right. Because he wasn't interested in healing her, with her. So what she would do is she would do things to bring attention to the family, hoping that he would come around. But Wow. But he didn't. He wouldn't. So that's why it's important that you have to understand when you deal with scars, don't let the scar remain so long that people become intolerant of you. And, and, and this is the thing, that's, that's exactly what I was saying, because after a while, 
uh, like I said, pity is not a place long term. Mm -hmm. um, it's supposed to be a place to remind people to stop for a moment and deal with this situation or this person or a system, but it's not supposed to be uh, 20 years of pity for a person. Yeah, yeah. There's supposed to be a growth place where you, you have pity is for me to take notice. Yeah. And then at that moment of pity is to take and help you to progress mm -hmm. past this place, not keep you here in a state of pitifulness yeah. And then everybody have to come to your pitifulness because no one is going to last forever in pitifulness with you. So yeah. you have to heal. Mm -hmm. You have to, even when it's self-inflicted, and this is what the show is about, when we cause our own injuries and our own pains and our own hurts, mm -hmm. I understand that we need to heal. Yes. But we have to own, how did I get here? I think that's the number, okay. num number one thing is how did I get here? And why, why have I been here so long? And why have I been here so long? Mm -hmm. And even if it's a short period of time, you know, what got me to the place, not them, what got me to the place where I'm here and, and, I've, and this injury has happened to me or this thing has happened to me? Uh, like to me, if you're in a relationship where uh, it's not good, it ain't godly or whatever it is, mm -hmm. you have to ask yourself, this is causing me a lot of pain. Why am I holding into this pain? Why am I allowing myself to be self-afflicted with this relationship? It don't have to be a husband, and, I mean not husband, um, uh, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, mm -hmm. husband, wife. Mm -hmm. It can be friendships yeah. that are so toxic that you have to ask yourself, why am I self-afflicting with mm -hmm. this relationship? Why am I causing myself this pain? And when anytime you find yourself with a friendship or a relationship that you dread to see the person coming, mm -hmm. Then it's your friend. <laughs> I mean, I mean yeah, but sometimes yeah. people have those relationships. Yeah. They don't know how to turn it off. And to me, it, that is self-inflicting. I'm causing myself injury with a person that I, they drag you down with mm -hmm. their presence because they are whatever toxic that they are. Mm -hmm. They drag you down. And now you just constantly, uh, uh, I call, in a state of just unhappiness. Yeah. Which causes scars, which causes your, your injury. But you're doing this to yourself as opposed to opening up your mouth, mm -hmm. own it. Like, why am I here? Why am I tolerating this from this person? It's, it's kind of like even with family matters. You know, sometimes, yeah. not sometimes, a lot of times family have those uh, scars that have gone on from childhood to younger to adulthood. And no one is taking the time to address those. Yep. Except we go to the family reunion. No one going to the family you're going to bring you a pain, but yet you go trying to prove a point. And proving something to someone doesn't make a, make a difference. The best thing you can do is learn to protect yourself and overcome that. Yeah. I know I was just reading in this, uh, in Psalms, that it was talking about, I was trying to find that scripture. Uh, and and I, I think this is in Psalms in 90. And, oh, Lord, come back to us. How long will you delay? Take, take pity on your servants. That's what I'm okay. trying to Take pity on <laughs> your servants. Mm -hmm. But even God, like when, he's, when we say, Lord, take pity on us, in the moment of his pity, in the moment of his having pity for us or, or feeling a, a, a sense of, let me have mercy on them, he still has a requirement after that. Yes. After he has mercy on us, there's going to be a standard or something he's going to require of us to get going, to get moving. Have mercy on us like we'll say, Lord, bless me in my finances. I need a, I yeah. need a financial breakthrough. Mm -hmm. That's this is thing. something that was self-inflicting all, all, all the time. Mm -hmm. Have mercy on me on my finances, and then the Lord will have a breakthrough in your yeah. life, financial yeah. breakthrough, right? And then we turn right back around. And do it again. And get back into debt, injure ourselves all over again, causing what? Self-inflicting wounds. Okay. Mm -hmm. Self-pains uh, uh, that, that now we're sitting back again, wringing our hands. Mm -hmm. Lord, how are we going to do it? Lord, how are we going to do it? <laughs> <laughs> when he already told you how when to do it. When he already told you how to do it. He had pity on you. He, he, he uh, established a way of, uh, of out for you. Mm -hmm. And then we turn back around because we have not learned how to not afflict on ourselves self-injuries and scars and to heal and move forward. Like the healing to me in finances is to feel like you don't have to have everything you see. Yeah, that's good. Like you have to literally tell yourself you're not entitled to everything you see. Good point. Now, I was thinking about how 
in my history, coming up as a, as, as a, as a young male in my family, I'm the baby of the family, so they say I was spoiled, but I don't think I was. Just had, like, just had a lot of candy going around. But uh, Call it what you may. I remember as a kid <laughs> how I would see my mom and her friends every Friday would get together. Right. And they would have their little, you know, party thing. Tardy, tardy. The tardy party, but it was, you know, Gotcha. And I remember this particular lady, I, I can't call her name. but Don't call her name. But I remember her and this guy were involved. She was married. I remember that much. And one day, every Friday, they would have their little cat fight battle. And I remember one day, because I back at our house, you know, it was a, like a, not upstairs, downstairs, but the back porch was up real high. And uh, we had uh, somehow the kids played in the yard, broke the, the rail that was, you know, we couldn't do it, you turn down. But the rail, you go straight off. So I remember somebody running right past me. First, she ran, and she hit me through the door and went way in the air flying because she went right into the dirt. And he, he's so stupid, he ran right behind her. He did the same thing. And I'm thinking, what you're saying, this is self-affliction. Right. These are scars that she didn't have to have in her life, mm -hmm. but she kept going back to the same relationship, which basically never got delivered Cause, from. Causing her own afflictions. Cause her, and, then you, and then you sit back talking about, this man ain't no good. He, yeah. he does this to me. He does that to me. And we're not understanding. Now, I'm not condoning. Don't don't send me no messages about condoning uh, uh, domestic violence. Yeah. I'm not that. I'm not saying that anyone is entitled to hit anyone at all. But what I'm saying is, why poke the bear Yeah. when you don't have to poke the bear? Uh, and, and to me, to stir up that kind of fire in, uh, in a spouse uh, of, of uh, what you call... Uh, Abusive. Yeah. yeah. Coming, you mm -hmm. know, having somebody in your life that's not yeah. supposed to be in your life on the side of your husband yeah. or your wife. You know, to me, that's poking the bear. Why cause that kind of affliction in your home mm -hmm. or on your children or stuff like that? I think that... Because that the, produced another scar because yeah. you're already in a bad situation and now... You're, you're doing something with someone else and bringing another situation. Yeah. So you got scars upon scars. Why not just leave this person yes. and move on with your life? Yeah. Why cause what I call self affliction, which is holding on to the knife mm -hmm. while literally grabbing yeah. another yeah. knife? Yeah. So you got two injuries going on mm -hmm. in, because we don't know how to heal from self affliction. We don't know how to not cause injury to ourselves. So we just go one thing after another, causing more and more affliction. More and more, more and more injury, and then we find ourselves in a low place, yeah. and uh, with no hope and feeling hopeless. But I'm, I, I wanted to say to our listening audience today that in order to come out of these, I call cycles yeah. of of self-afflicting wounds, and to heal from it, to heal from your scars, you gotta own it. Yeah, you gotta own. This is something I am either doing or allowing. To be done and so you got to own that mm -hmm. and then you have to be willing to not make excuses for it like don't say well this is the reason why yeah. I'm doing this yeah. this is the reason why don't make excuses <clears throat> if, if, if you're if it's a spiritual thing mm -hmm. and 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 Christ I know is our